Tennessee Wesleyan University graduates, faculty, distinguished guests, friends and family, good evening and welcome to the 2019 Winter Commencement Ceremony of Tennessee Wesleyan University and the celebration of our 162nd year of service to this community and beyond. I'm Harley Knowles, president of the university. It is with pleasure that I declare our ceremony officially open. In reverence to our graduates, please place your phones on vibration in a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the invocation given, us, given to us this evening by Reverend Dr. William McDonald. Let us pray. Lord of all hopefulness, we gather in this season of expectation to celebrate at once an ending and a beginning. We give thanks tonight for the loving support of friends and family, staff and faculty who have seen these graduates through years of growth and discovery. We give thanks for the opportunity to apply heart and mind, soul and strength to pursuing knowledge, to desiring the truth alone, and to savoring wisdom's endless feast. As we greet the dawn of a new day in the lives of these graduates, may it begin a lifetime for them of applying heart, mind, soul, and strength to knowledge, truth, and wisdom by serving those Christ called the least of these, by courageously speaking out on behalf of the suffering, and by doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly with you, Lord God. Above all, by your Holy Spirit, plant in the hearts of these graduates the joy of knowing that their lives serve these greater ends in your kingdom. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend McDonald. Please be seated. Let me take a moment to introduce our platform dignitaries. Dr. Grant Wilhite, our Vice President for Academic Affairs. The Reverend Dr. William McDonough, our Associate Dean of Humanities and Fine Arts. Reverend Skip White, our commencement speaker. And Mr. Alan Carter, Vice Chair of our Board of Trustees. It is indeed an honor this evening to welcome as our commencement speaker the Reverend Skip White. Reverend White was born and raised on the plains of North Dakota on the family farm. After graduating from high school, he attended Dakota uh, Wesleyan University, where he played football and studied religion and philosophy. Reverend White graduated from Dakota Wesleyan in 2002 and left the Midwest to continue education at Duke Divinity School in Durham, North Carolina. Reverend White is an ordained elder in the Holston Conference of the United Methodist Church. He has pastored in a variety of unique appointments in the, last, in the past 15 years and is currently the senior pastor of Trinity United Methodist Church and will also serve as our chaplain for Tennessee Wesleyan beginning next month. Reverend White is accompanied this evening by his lovely wife, Victoria, Victoria is a member of Denzo organization where she actively utilizes her fluency in Japanese. Skip and Victoria have one son, Charlie, who's with us tonight also, and is in the fifth grade. Now please give a warm welcome to Reverend Skip White. Good evening, everyone. It's good to be with you tonight to celebrate this wonderful night of, uh, of graduation. 
Uh, we celebrate you graduates tonight because you've done something incredible. You've done something really hard and you all need to be very proud of yourself and the accomplishments that you've done tonight. Uh, I grew up, as Dr. Knowles said, in North Dakota. Uh, my whole family was involved in education. All of my family is teachers. Both my parents, excuse me, both my sisters, both my uncles are all teachers. I'm the black sheep of the family because I came a, became a pastor. Uh, and so I don't get to go home very often. But, uh, but I grew up around education. My dad was a teacher. He was a math student. He loved math. He was great at math and business. Uh, but my mom was something else. Sharon White was something different. She was a fifth grade teacher for 30 years, which I believe qualifies her for sainthood, right? Uh, she taught fifth grade for 30 years, and she loved to do one thing, and that is every day after lunch, when the kids were coming in from recess, when they're all carb loaded and, you know, exhausted from the day, she would sit them down and she would sit on a high stool and she would open up Little House on the Prairie and she would read to her students every day from Little House. She would start the series at the beginning of the year and she would, util uh, she would read it all the way through to the end, at the end of the year. And you know, like 30 years later, her students will come up to me if they see me out and they'll say, I don't remember anything I learned in school. No offense. I don't remember anything I learned in school, but I remember your mom reading to us every day. And I still can't think about Little House on the Prairie without thinking of Sharon White. Now, a side note to that. Uh, my father passed away a couple years ago, and so we do what happens in those situations. My sister and I went back to the hometown, went back to the house. We packed up those things that are essential, so my mother was going to move down to Tennessee with me, favorite child, okay? And so, uh, so we packed up her things, and we're getting her to, uh, packed up so she could move down here, and we come across this accordion file. Do you all know what that is? Okay. We unwrap the leather strap that's holding this accordion file together and we open it up and do you know what we found? We found her page stubs from when she used to sell shoes at JCPenney and we found her high school grades report card. They were handwritten. Can you believe that? Wouldn't you all like to handwrite your own report card? <laughs> This woman who sat there in front of her class every day for 30 years and read Little House on the Prairie, do you know what she got in English for those four years? No better than a C. <laughs> and don't think that my sisters and I didn't run to her to share this knowledge with her, that she didn't get better than a C all the way through high school. But that was kind of the point. She went through four years of English and reading in high school and was deemed to be no better than average in that skill, and yet that became her legacy. That's what people still remember her for today. I got a D in Methodist studies, and they ordained me, okay? <laughs> well, not officially, but... Um, so if I can tell you anything tonight that I want you to remember, it's don't ever let what another experience in life has judged you to be no better than average. Define what your legacy is going to be in this world and who 30 years from now will remember you for that unique and special quality that you possess and develop it throughout your life. But we're here tonight to celebrate you. We're here to celebrate this incredibly hard thing that you've done. If you can do this, I want you to remember that you can do anything. There's nothing that you're going to face in the life that you're going to lead that's going to be harder than what you have done by achieving your degree. Angela Duckworth wrote this great book about grit and toughness. And she talked about how, you know, how tough we are, how gritty we are. Sometimes can be uh, nature, you know, what we're born with. But by and large, it's about the environment in which we develop those skills over time, what nurture, right? Uh, so we develop our toughness, we develop and grow more gritty as we get older. And one of the ways in which that happens is that we go through a process of achievements, right? So being a farm boy from North Dakota, right? What club do you think I joined? The FFA, okay? When you're in North Dakota, you join the Future Farmers of America Club. Now my first year as a freshman, I joined the club and I was a member of the local club. 
My sophomore year, I was a member of the club and I was elected to be the secretary of the local club, right? Okay, now my junior year, I was a member of the club, I was elected vice president of the FFA chapter, right? And what do you think happened in my senior year? They kicked me out because they learned I wasn't any good. But as the process went on, I became more tough and more resilient, and then I wanted to try new things and, and begin to grow, and that's why I moved out of the Midwest and came to be a Southern boy, because you have Waffle House down here. <laughs> it's very important. There's nothing you can't do now that you've achieved this. You started out, you didn't know how it was going to go, you achieved that first year, and then you went on to your second year, and you started doing more things, you became more active, and now as you take this degree and you move forward, you have to understand that you are tough and you're resilient, and there's nothing that you can't achieve. It's important to remember that. Here's another thing I want you to remember. You know, life's, life is hard and life is difficult, and my wife and I tell this to each other all the time that you have to take encouragement from those who encourage. You have to be willing to listen to the voices that are going to speak words of encouragement and joy and hope into your life. There's going to be an awful lot of people that are going to tell you that you can't do something. There are going to be an awful lot of people who are going to tell you what you're doing wrong. But you don't need to listen to those people. You don't need to listen to what you're doing wrong because my guess is that you already know what you're doing wrong. You need to listen to the people who speak the words of hope and truth and power to you and tell you what you're doing right and how to get better at doing those things. I haven't learned anything from one person who told me what I was doing wrong, but the people who encourage me and say, this is what you do really well and here's how we can get you to a better place. Those are the people I listen to. Those are the people who speak words of encouragement. Take encouragement from people who encourage. The other thing that my wife and I like to tell each other all the time too uh, is that we don't ever, you know, there's so much negativity and distractions when, and, and things that happen and are going to happen in your life. And don't any, let anyone steal your joy. Don't let anyone steal your joy. Joy is the most valuable commodity that you can have moving forward. And it's something that is in limited quantities sometimes. And people will want to steal that joy and don't let that happen. You take that joy and you experience joy and you give others joy and don't don't let anybody else, you know, somebody's going to fire a shot, somebody's going to say something mean, somebody's going to say something negative, and you'll think about it all day, and they won't think twice about it, will they? But you'll think about it all day, and they're stealing your joy. Don't let that happen. Don't let them steal your joy. You know, in a minute, we've got light here, and we're going to light candles, and you're going to take that light and out into the world. And I think the greatest joy that I have experienced in the seven years that I attended a higher education um, uh, institution was that people helped light my candle. People helped light what I was trying to do in the world and they supported that and empowered that and I hope that you find that place here at Tennessee Wesleyan. That no matter where you go in this world, no matter what you do, no matter who you meet or what you experience or the jobs you hold, there'll always be a place for you to get your fire lit and to help take that into the world. I've only been here a short time, but I've been loved and encouraged and supported by the community that's here, and some of that are you all. And you've helped light my fire. You've helped me glow brightly. And I hope that you are able to go out and bring light into some of the dark corners that you may experience. God bless you. Congratulations. There's nothing you can't do now. Thank you, Reverend White. Uh, Inspirational, a good reminder for all of us. At this time, we'd like to make presentation of two special awards. Dr. Wilhite. The Athens Area Chamber of Commerce Awards are presented to the male and female undergraduates who have achieved the highest academic average whether or not all their coursework was completed at Tennessee Wesleyan University. This year's female recipient is Mary Hall with a GPA of 
The male recipient is Brian Pearson with a GPA of 3.96. Now comes the time we've all been waiting for, the awarding of the degrees. Dr. Will Height, if you please. Will the 2019 candidates for the Masters of Business Administration degree please stand? Mr. President, I present to you these members of the class of 2019 who have been recommended by the faculty, approved by the Board of Trustees, and who have completed all requirements to receive their Master of Business Administration degrees. By the authority vested in me by the State of Tennessee, upon the authority of the Board of Trustees, and with the approval of the faculty, I confer upon you the Master's degree with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Please be seated. Will the 2019 candidates for the baccalaureate degrees please stand? <laughs> Mr. President, I present to you these members of the class of 2019 who have been recommended by the faculty, approved by the Board of Trustees, and who have completed all requirements to receive their baccalaureate degree. By the authority vested in me by the State of Tennessee, upon the authority of the Board of Trustees, and with the approval of the faculty, I confer upon you the baccalaureate degree with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Please be seated. Will the candidates for master degrees and baccalaureate degrees Please come forward. Brianna Ruth Carroll. Amanda Nicole Gibson. Colby Alexander Harris. Emily Marie Hayes. Dory S. Howington. Matthew Eaton Maddox. Oh. Ashton Morgan Burroughs.
Crystal Hicks Scrimpture. Megan Sierra Webb. Dylan Shane Klein. Victoria Amy Marie Hinton, summa cum laude. Cynthia May Ballard. Caitlin Ray Barlock. Trevor Scott Bybee. Caius Anton Blumquist. Cum laude. Angela Mary Solomon Coors, cum laude. Jeffrey Cronin. Nicholas Robert Croucher. Alfred Cruz. Lauren Jane Cunningham. Nicholas Davis. Constance Alexandra Doyle, magna cum laude. Stephen Russell Ebel, cum laude. Cameron Itson. Jennifer Lynn Ferris, summa cum laude. Jacob Edward Philippone. Devante Fletcher. <laughs> Julia Elizabeth Forrest, cum laude. <laughs> Justin Scott Franklin. Clay Coleman Gentry. Carly Marie Green. Mary Elizabeth Hall, summa cum laude. Emily Jo Henry, summa cum laude. Tristan Ty Jones. Erica Michelle Kyle. Marley Joe Long. Logan Longwith.
Christia Ariel Madden. Jessica Maxwell. Caitlin Emilia McClary, magna cum laude. Caio Baudouel. Riante Rivon Miller. Swong Nguyen Kyu Tao. Darren Gregory Payton. Gerald Brian Pearson, summa cum laude. Michaela Brooke Phillips. Tanner Plemons, cum laude. Caitlin Carlene Sykes. Casey Deanne Tylene Sowers. Julia Nicole Standridge, summa cum laude. Joshua Philip Stuckey. Ladeja Thurkill. Kimberly Turner, magna cum laude. Zumra Velich, cum laude. Roderick Juan Williams. Joshua Donald Wright. Corey Joseph Winant. Jessica Reagan Young, magna cum laude. Patricia John Dawn Grubb. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the graduating class of 2019.
At this time, I'd like to have our graduates recognize their families for all their help and support during their educational journey. Graduates, please join the faculty and staff in expressing our appreciation to your loved ones for their part in your academic success. Graduates, when reflecting on your experiences at Tennessee Wesleyan University, you'll realize that you were taught and mentored by outstanding faculty and staff. Join me now in recognizing the distinguished faculty and staff of Tennessee Wesleyan University. As we consider the sacrifices made so that we could have the opportunity and privilege of being here today, I'd like to take a moment to recognize those individuals who have served our country in the armed forces and who have made personal sacrifices to preserve our freedoms. With the active service men and women, as well as veterans of all branches of the United States Armed Forces, please rise. this time. Please stand as you are able and join me in the singing of our alma mater. You will find the text printed in this evening's bulletin. Graduates, you now stand before this gathering at the culmination of your Tennessee Wesleyan University journey. Although the goal of graduation may have seemed to you out of reach at times, you present yourselves now before family, friends, and the university as graduates. This is a time of celebration. But as you celebrate, remember that the attainment of every goal carries with it the commitment to set new goals and to face new challenges. When you entered our academic halls, you had the right to expect help and guidance on your journey, to acquire knowledge, whether you were a traditional college student or a working adult who had to balance work and family and school. The faculty who stand before you provided you with the opportunity to acquire knowledge, face challenges, and grow in your understanding of the world. 
At the same time, they provided encouragement, advice, and in sometimes a shoulder to cry on. You were asked to heed the advice given to you by your faculty, but not to give up your independence. You were expected to question and challenge your guides, and in doing so, challenge yourself to attain new and loftier goals. It is now your obligation to improve upon the example that was set by those before you. Whenever possible, seek new solutions and higher levels of academic achievement in scholarship, and leadership, and service. Light has repeatedly been used as a symbol for knowledge. Tennessee Wesleyan University celebrates this symbolism even in its motto, Lux et Veritas, Light and Truth. To commemorate this part of your journey, the light of Tennessee Wesleyan University will now be passed from, from your faculty to you, the graduating class of 2019. Your challenge as you pass from these halls to carry the light of knowledge gained at Tennessee Wesleyan University into the next chapter in your journey. Now TWU graduates, take your candles and go light your world. Some brightly burning, some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a candle, and makes his home. So carry your candle. Run to the darkness, seek out the hopeless, confused and torn. Hold out your candle for all to see, and take your candle, go light your Frustrated brother, see how he's tried to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to, still holds a candle without a flame so carry your candle run to the darkness seek out the lonely the tired and worn hold out your candle for all to see and take your Go light your world, take your candle, go light your world. Cause we are a family whose hearts are blazing so let's raise our candles and light up the sky praying to our father in the name of jesus make us a beacon in darkest times so carry your candle, run to the 
darkness seek out the hopeless confused and torn will hold out your candle for all to see and take your candle go light your world take your candle Go light your world. A prayer and a blessing. Let us pray. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, through paths as yet untrodden, and through perils unknown. We go forth not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love is guiding us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.